Everything was wonderful. Pleasure and satisfaction were spread everywhere and simplicity. I can't even describe how humble our community was. We had the moment, the moment that was life-changing to everyone. The genocide that occurred on the 3rd of August 2014. Sinjar, the humble and rich of culture city, turned to a horrible and dreadful place. My family and I had to escape to the mountain. We survived there for nine days without any food and water. We were eating leaves and drinking the rain water stored in caves. It was an unfortunate situation. I observed heartbreaking scenes. I saw friends and relatives being killed, dying of thirst and starvation. People crying, frightened by bullet shoots over us. We were close to lose the hope to continue in life until we escaped to northern Iraq. We were kept in plastic tents more than five years. Allow me now to take you on a journey, intending to picture the situation for you. I have decided to begin my day from my current home, visiting some of the most valuable places to my heart. Firstly, let me introduce you to my best friend, Sami. I honestly see it very necessary, because I spent most of my time talking with him. He's laying down here, between all these people. It is the mass grave of Solach. They were all slaughtered by ISIS, here in the current place that I'm standing by my own feet. It is used to be a fish pole, which is next to the Sinjar Educational Institute. It was very attracted and beneficial place for students. Unfortunately, it instantly turned to a bloodbath 
of 100 young Yazidis were killed by ISIS. This place used to be the city center, the main market for Shengal. It was crowded with people, particularly on special occasions. But now it's the market of corpses, covered under demolished buildings. And 95% of this market has been demolished. However, ISIS was not aiming to eliminate Yazidis only. Christians were crucially killed as well and also had their church destroyed by ISIS. I have spent nine years of my life here in this destroyed mud huts that used to be my primary and secondary school and it was also the only school in my village. I know it was a place made of clay, no electricity, and no doors and windows. It had only small holes in the walls that we could only breathe. We didn't have music, lab, art classes like other school. I have lots of memories in this school that showed our suffering but we rather had a love on them to overcome the thinking of the reason why we are getting through this at the first place. Once a friend of mine were in the class and one of the muddy hut fell down on us due to the heavy rains and we continued the class laughing as nothing had ever happened. However, currently it's nothing but collapse and by this disaster our dreams has been destroyed. Lastly, it's the main source of my old good memories and moments. I have spent 15 years of my life here, my home. I still remember 
each corner with its exact small details inside of my home. It doesn't seem identical to me anymore to be honest. The only place that seems identical now and it can be called home, it's unfortunately the tent. Thank <laughs> you. 